Okay, I want to introduce you guys to some basics of MATLAB. Hopefully you've seen a lot of these things before, um, but I wanted to at least talk about some basics of arrays because that's something that we're really using pretty much all the time in this class. All right, critical thing about MATLAB, a couple of things. You'll notice your version, when you open it, probably looks a little bit different than mine. The only reason it really looks any different than mine is, is basically because what I'm doing here um, is I've tried to make it look like uh, the way that I'm used to having it look. So back when I used to look at the old versions of MATLAB, it used to just be that you had what we call our command window. You guys probably have it such that you have a bunch of little windows inside of your, your main MATLAB window. I usually just set mine up so that I have um, just the command screen here. So on the left side of my screen, I've got the commands. On the right side of my screen, I've got what I call a script. Okay, So just so that you guys understand, there's a difference between a script and a function. And this is not a MATLAB thing. This is just a coding thing. A script, by definition, is just a series of commands in a file. And if I run that script, it just executes that series of commands. All right, so um, just some basic kind of notation stuff here. If I want to write a new script, I basically go over to this guy and I say new script, and then it opens up a new script, and I can start writing. Okay, so I want to introduce us to the concept of, of vectors, all right? Vectors or arrays. That's the way MATLAB operates, and, and typically you guys are going to make use of vectors and arrays. So there's two types of vectors, what we call row vectors and column vectors. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to compare these guys right here, which I just highlighted, X row and Y row. They're basically two vectors of numbers, okay? And they're both what I call row vectors. So if I want to just execute this code, I got a couple of ways I can do this. One thing is I can just copy this guy and paste it over into my command window. All right. And I see that what I get is X row and Y row. All right. So basically I get a row vector. In other words, all the entries are in a row. Now I could also have executed those commands instead of copying and pasting. Right, I can right click on there and I can say evaluate selection and you'll notice in my command window it did the same thing. All right. Now let's say for sake of argument that I didn't want to use a row vector. I could also use what's called a column vector. Right? That's what I've created here in lines 8 and 9. So if I go ahead and I execute this code you'll see that what I have is column vectors. Now how did I make them different from each other. You'll notice in the row vectors I just wrote the numbers out 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. Whereas down here in the column vectors I put a semicolon in between the numbers. If I tell it a semicolon that's effectively telling it to put the next entry on a new line. All right. Now to understand what the size of each one of those is I can use the size command in MATLAB. Right, so I do size of x row, and it tells me that it has this answer, 1, 4. Now, you don't know what that means. Okay, So if I don't know what that means, one thing I can do is I can type help size. I can always type help in the name of a command. So I do that. All right? It tells me here size is the size of an array. So for an M by N matrix X, it returns a two element row vector D equal M N containing the number of rows and columns in the matrix. So in this case, we have an array or a vector. So it says for N D arrays, size X returns a one by N vector of dimension lengths. All right. So a little bit confusing, but essentially what it's telling me is that this guy has one row, four columns. Okay, If I did size of x column, it tells me it has 
four rows and one column, right? It's a column vector, meaning it's set up so that everything is in one column. So let's just look at X column again, All right? So I see that there are four rows and there are is one column, okay? So the first entry from size is always the um, number of rows and the second entry is always the number of columns. Now, <clears throat> the reason I like that size command is it tells me whether I'm dealing with a row vector or a column vector, and that can be kind of important, all right? Now, um, let's say I had my X row and I wanted to add a constant to every entry in that guy. I would just add that constant. Let's say I wanted to add three to everything. If I want to add three to everything, I just say plus three, right? and I just get the same thing back out. The problems that you run into are when I want to perform what we call an element-wise operation. In other words, if I want every entry in X row to be multiplied by every entry in Y row. So X row is this, Y row is this. If I just do X row times Y row, it won't let me do that. The reason is that MATLAB is trying to do a matrix operation. Now we're really not going to focus too much on matrix operations. So we, we will, however, want to deal with individual vectors like this, which have numbers in them. So if I want to multiply every element in X row by every element in Y row, I use the element wise operator, which is I put a dot in front of whatever operation I want to do. So I say X row dot multiply Y row. Now if I look at that, I see I get four entries. All right, so let's look at X row and Y row. So X row has zero, one, two, three. Y row has four, five, six, and seven. So my result, if I just figured out what should the result be, right? Should be zero times four is zero. One times five is five. Two times six is 12. 7 times 3 is 21, right? And I see if I do x row dot star y row, which I have over here on the left, just becomes 0, 5, 12, 21, exactly what I was expecting it to be. Now, I said I'd use this dot anytime I want to do an operation on each element individually, okay? So the important thing is when I want to do an operation on each element individually, Right, so when I wanted to do x row plus 3, I'm performing the same operation to each element. All right, I'm adding 3 to each one. That's, that's an easy thing to do. Right? If I'm trying to do something like um, get 1 over each entry in x row, I'm basically performing a different operation to each one of these uh, entries. And so for that, anytime I'm doing a different operation on each individual one, I have to use that dot operator. So let's say I wanted to take X row and I wanted to square every entry. If I want to do a separate operation on each entry, I have to say dot and then power. So the caret operator is basically to the power. So in this case, X row dot caret two gives me each entry in X row squared. If I wanted to take one over every entry in X row, I would have to do one dot divide X row, and I get this result. Now notice the first one here says INF, and that should make sense because the first entry in X row over here is a zero, okay? All right, so if I'm adding, if I'm simply adding or subtracting a constant or multiplying by a constant, then I'm effectively performing the same operation on each individual element. And in that case, I don't need the dot multiply, right? So if I do two times X row, I'm doing the same operation on each one. I don't need the dot multiply. But if I'm trying to do 
a different operation on each element, then I need that element-wise operator, which is the dot. Okay, so for instance, dot caret cubed. Okay. Now this comes into play in a lot of places and a lot of problems that we're going to have. All right, so you guys uh, will need to get familiar with this sort of dot multiply and sort of the basic operations on these vectors. Now, in general, when you're working, it doesn't matter whether you decide to use row vectors or column vectors. You're just going to need to make sure that you're always using the same ones. So let's say for sake of argument that you had x row and y column. Let's say those two vectors were the two vectors that you wanted to operate on. Well, because they one's a row vector and one's a column vector, that becomes a little bit of an issue. So what I can do is I can use this little tick mark here. Right? So basically the quotation mark. What that does is something called a transpose. In other words, it takes something that's a column vector and makes it a row vector, or it takes something that's a row vector and makes it a column vector. So if I do Y column tick, Notice that that column vector became a row vector. Okay, so what I could do is say y row two equals y column with that tick. Now I've created y row two, which is exactly the same as my original row vector, and I can do operations like x row dot multiply y row, and I get the same or y row 2, I get the same results. The important thing is to always make sure that you're, you're consistent in the type of vector that you're using. Either you're using row vectors or you're using column vectors. So just be consistent with it. Most of the time you guys will probably end up using row vectors.